deficit. And we can see that Sri Lanka is dark red. So we are in the dark red, our ecological footprint being greater than 150% of our biocapacity. Over the recent past, our ecological deficit has been increasing. With the increasing trend continuing, while the biocapacity is stagnating at about 0.5 hectares per person, global hectares per person. Uh, this slide again shows our Sri Lankan situation. We are fast reaching the limit for sustainability in uh, locally. We were quite good. 50, 60 years ago, we were only 0.3 Earths when the global ecological footprint hit one in 1969-70. We were very good at that time. But it has become so resource inefficient that we are fast approaching one as a country. We can no longer put the blame on the other countries for the global situation of climate change and other impacts of resource depletion that we are facing now. We as engineers have to play a major role in ma managing this situation. Ours is defined as a people serving profession. We cannot expect people to go back to the lifestyle that, that was led by our forefathers without electricity without the modern conveniences, as it is not a practical solution. This is where sustainable engineering comes in. We must make the ecological limits central to all our decision making. Sustainability is not an option. It is the only way. Our research and development activities should be focused on resource efficiency, energy efficiency, and clean technologies if we are to make any difference to the business as usual situation. The challenge to engineers today is to find ways and means of doing things that we are trained to do in a resource constrained world. We need to go for smart, disruptive technologies, understand the nature and natural processes, work with other professionals like natural and social scientists, and most importantly, communicate our ideas and findings to each other. Working in isolation is not going to be of much use to the world. There is so much of information and knowledge already available, but the bits and pieces have to be put together and the gaps filled by clever people like you to make sense out of it. So let us make use of the great opportunity provided by gatherings like the annual sessions and the many seminars and discussions provided by the IESL at Colombo headquarters, as well as the provincial chapters district centers and our overseas chapters to strengthen the engineers by sharing knowledge and findings with our common goal of serving the people of the world, not only today, but for many generations to come. Then only we could hope to have an improving trend in the global and national ecological footprint, giving hope for a cleaner, greener planet Earth. I would finally, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the IESL for having faith in my leadership over the past year to take this prestigious institution forward using my expertise and my own style. It has been an honor and a privilege to now be counted among its past presidents and I look forward to collaborating with the future presidents and all our engineers to take this institution and our country as a whole uh, forward on a country as a whole on a very exciting journey of sustainable growth using our best practices and ever evolving technology. Thank you. Our chief guest, Honorable Karujai Surya, Speak, Honorable Speaker of Parliament has arrived. Let me warmly welcome you, sir, and I hand, hand over the 
mic to our compare to uh, do the needful. Thank you very much, Professor. Well, I, as the compere too, would like to take this opportunity in extending a warm welcome to our chief guest this morning, Honorable Karuja Surya, Speaker of the Parliament of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Everybody, put your hands together and give him a round of applause. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the inception, I was talking about the rich history of the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. Like I said, it was established in 1906. It has a very clear vision and a mission. And right now, I have pride in introducing you for the first time, presenting to all of you for the very first time a song that is the theme song of IESL. Let's listen to it, everybody. उपासनटेरुआ Sandanameti, Adip the Vastu Didula Nasi, Injanerume Vikramean Nam, Sureagin Elia Lab, Oba Avata Didulana, Ananta Primana Vastun, Sampat, Prabhavayan, Hariata, Sanda Eli the Haraven, Bellu Bellu Atta Ate, Injaneru Mahime, Nimeuru de Noed, Eva Hariata, Ira Elian, Elia U, Sandahi, Prabhamat, Pratipalavagi Noed. Inamutu, Yahan in Pibida, Davas Nimava, Yali Re Yahanate Anaturu, Oba Upper Vindiname, Nuane Mahime, Nuan in Vimasia Yutu, Kale, then Peminata. Inisai, I E S L Engineer Rugite, Uttama Purushe Nova, Tunwani Parshawe Kin, Dakinak Lesser, Nirmane Vani, Engineer Loki, Adar Niai. Me gite gaina kalayute oba noe, apay. Manda ira handa gaha kola, guana sayura matunova, me pemberavu mihi madala purama, apata penene, ingenieru obey, oba surkamia. Ebevin oba asasiti numenavi, api mese gaya nemu. Nuana vida lo care des a beluit, obey nuana kala. Mahavis kam hamui. Ruana lesin e nuana rakin letter. Rataka daeke jana hadavat peratama e. Ira hada obamai. Nuvanavit 
ಬಲು ಬಿಟ್ಟ ಒಬೇನುವನ ಕಲ beautiful melody and of course very meaningful lyrics all about you the engineers the iesl theme song everybody i think we deserve a better round of applause for that song everybody let's hear it well incidentally the lyrics and concept is by bandula nanya karavasan the music is by kapila pugadarachi uh, the song was sung in singhala by visharada nelu adhikari Sangeet Nipun Asanka Leena Rachi and team by K Mahindra Kumar Nitya Mahindra Kumar and team Well ladies and gentlemen it's my pleasure now to invite our chief guest to address you all he has been the speaker of parliament of Sri Lanka since 2015 previously he was mayor of Colombo from 1997 to 1999 minister of power and energy from 2001 to 2004 minister of public administration and home affairs from 2007 to 2008 and minister of buddha sasana public administration and democratic governance in 2015 He served as chairman of the leadership council of the United National Party as well as deputy leader of the UNP. He is a member of parliament representing the Gampa district. 
Ladies and gentlemen, he received his early education at Ananda College, Colombo. Under President Rana Singh of Premadasa's government, he was appointed as Sri Lanka's ambassador to Germany. As Speaker of Parliament, he also acts as Chairman of the Constitutional Council. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure inviting our chief guest this morning, Honorable Karuja Surya, Speaker of Parliament of Sri Lanka, to address you all. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. May I extend a very warm and affectionate welcome to all of you present here today, distinguished members of the head table, Madam President of the Association, Professor Niranjani Ratnayaka, today's guest of honor, Engineer Mr. Prelis, President elect Professor Abekon, the keynote speaker. Professor Vajira Kulatileka, the President of the uh, Organizing Committee, other distinguished members of the head table, ladies and gentlemen. For those foreign visitors who are present here today, may I greet them in the traditional Sri Lankan way by saying I Bowan, which means may you have a long life. Let me say that I'm very privileged an honor to be with you this morning. You are a profession that we respect, and I always believe that you can be described, or engineers can be described as nation builders. You as a prestigious organization, having been born in, 2000, in, 1000, in 1916, you are one of the very oldest prestigious associations. You have a membership of over 20,000 members with 5,000 chartered engineers. You are having branches in all provinces of the country, and also you are having overseas branches in Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Qatar. In your distinguished membership, there are quite a large number of world-renowned engineers, and I take this opportunity to pay tribute to all of them. Late, Dr. D late uh, Mr. DJ Bimla Surendra, father of the hydropower, late Dr. N.S. Kulasinghe, pioneer of precast and pre-stressed concrete, and late uh, Mr. Ray Vijayavadhan, designer of two-wheel walking tractor, are uh, only a few such names. They bought fame and prestige to Sri Lanka through their innovations. Their contribution to the nation's development was massive, and therefore still remembered by many Sri Lankans with great respect even today. However, we cannot forget the engineers who lived centuries back and who have been well remembered for their engineering skills and the masterpieces that they have produced. Sigiri Rock Fortress and its water garden, frescoes, mirror wall, are considered as engineering marvels made by the ancient engineers of our country, and we all can be proud of their efforts and achievements. When you look at the ancient constructions, such as the Dietavana Ramya Stupa, Pagoda, in the ancient city of Anuradhapura, the rock temple of the Buddha situated in the ancient city of Polonnaruwa, the cave temple in Dambulla can be cited as great examples of engineering's outstanding engineering skills. Similarly, uh, one cannot forget the technology that has been applied in the irrigation system in our country thousands of years ago. The technology that had been used by the then engineer century back is amazing. And more importantly, this technology is still relevant even after centuries. Looking back from its inception in 1906, your members played a key role in the nation building, particularly with regard to roads and irrigation. Galloa project has been a real achievement of the Sri Lankan engineers. It was built with our own money. Ladies and gentlemen, Sri Lanka has embarked on a massive infrastructure development program as at now. Ministry of Megapolis, in particular, is having an ambitious plan to develop infrastructure. The new highways, new rail tracks, monorail are uh, some such envisaged projects. The port city itself will be a massive project, and Sri Lanka is now getting more and more international interest due to its strategic geographical location. 
the Sri Lanka geographical location is such that some of the people say that when the God created the world, the Sri Lanka was placed in the ideal geographical position. That is why we are also get in the attention of world powers. I must confess, we have a severe brain drain due to lower salary levels prevailing here, especially with the public service. We also happy to see several local engineering companies have expanded to international standards and some of them are outbidding some of the prestigious foreign companies and we are very, very proud of all of them. I would appeal to you to do maximum to ensure more students take to engineering and stand and please stand with them to until they reach maturity. It is my view that the government must look at engineers in a serious manner, give them due recognition. I have always canvassed this, this uh, ideology. I would also like to congratulate your membership for the high discipline that you maintain in your profession. In a country where strikes, work disruption, and the so-called work to rules where they don't work are frequent, your members maintain the dignity of the profession. I salute your noble stand. I was happy that two days ago, President Sirisena hailed young inventors. I would appeal to you to take more aggressive role here. Please encourage them. We are proud to have several prominent successful inventors who earn millions of foreign exchange for the nation even now by way of royalty. I vividly remember the enormous contribution made by particular late Ray Vijayabhadana. He developed the two-wheel agriculture tractor which was produced by Kubota of Japan and since there, was, since there was no encouragement from this side. Then he developed a light aircraft which he flew from Chila to Colombo municipal grounds. Then he developed the gyrocopter, which could land on inland waters, which he named Tanakolapetta. None of these initiatives got start state support at the time due to the prevailing rigid laws. And also I recall, I met him many occasions, and towards the tail end of his life, he was developing something called the flying motorcycle, flying cycle. He developed that, that time I was the chairman of the United Motors, we came into agreement and we thought we will, you know, something that can be developed and it was on the planning stage and he was telling me that the tests were very successful. Unfortunately, he didn't get off the ground because uh, I have to, I left the company to take up a diplomatic assignment and then it went off and, the, and the, there was not much of interest on the project. But I know he took great pride in developing that. He said from Colombo to Candy, it was talking of Metro Minutes and uh, he, he was really keen to develop that. Then also he developed, promoted the power generation uh, through Griseria, which is now being done. I mentioned his achievement as a respect to the great personality. These are pioneers that needed state patronage and recognition. We unfortunately lost several opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the outgoing president Engineer Professor Niranjani Ratnayak and the committee members of this institution for their commitment and hard work to the well being and progress of the membership during their tenure. Equally, I warmly welcome the incoming president of the Institution of Engineers and the committee members. I wish them good luck in their future endeavors. Finally, I take this opportunity to thank the organizing committee for inviting me for this wonderful event. Let me say that I enjoyed every moment that I spent with you. I am sure that the sessions will bring pride to our country. Let me once again say that you have a vital role to play in rebuilding this nation. Because in saying that, I must also once again I tell you that we got independence 70 years ago and during this 70 year period, uh, we had two unsuccessful military coups. We had two unsuccessful youth insurrection coupled with the 30 years of terrorist activity. So you can see where we are when we are compared. When we and Japan had a one dollar difference in our per capita income, today we have sat behind. So that is why I say that there's a long way to go. But as engineers, you have a great role to play to build this nation. I thank you for the courtesy of your attention. Thank you very much, Honorable Sir, for your thought-provoking address, your words of inspiration and words of encouragement. Thank you once again, everybody. Please put your hands together for our chief guest this morning.
Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to the presentation of awards and certificates to the junior inventors. The junior inventor of the year competition is an annual competition the institution has been organizing since 1987 to encourage and promote innovative thinking and creativity among young schoolgoers. The children who have come first in this competition would be rewarded today with medals. So would be the runners-up, certificates and cash awards as a means of recognizing... Everybody, let's put our hands together for another round of applause. The innovators of the future of our country. And securing second place for the safe branch cutting device, the recipient will receive a silver medal, a certificate, and a cash prize of 17,000 rupees. Securing second place, ladies and gentlemen, is Master M. Izzat Mohammed Ayash of Zahira College, Babanella. I'm sure we can put another round of applause for the first runner-up, the junior inventor of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the title award, junior inventor of the year 2018, would receive a gold medal, a certificate and 20,000 rupee cash prize, the product being safe gas regulator. And the winner is Master W.A.K. Budwin Udapala of Singadilla Central College, Singadilla. I would like to correct, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's from Sandalankava Central College, Sandalankava. Everybody, put your hands together for Master W.A.K. Budwin Udapala of Sandalankava Central College, Sandalankava. Everybody, another round of applause. We now move on to the presentation of certificates to the members who are registered as international professional engineers during the session. With the ISL gaining the full membership of the International Professional Engineers Agreement, formerly known as the Engineers Mobility Forum, a new category of engineers called the International Professional Engineers has been introduced. These engineers will have cross-border mobility as the professional qualifications of these engineers and will recognized in other member countries of the International Professional Engineers Agreement. And they are Engineer S.H.U. De Silva. <laughs> Engineer P.H.R. Heva Gigana. Engineer Dr. S. Vikramaratna. <laughs> Engineer D. Madhagava. Engineer Mrs. H. Kumar Devi. Engineer L. Subaharan. Engineer P.W. Sarat. (laughs) 
and engineer D. R. N. Jasuria. I'm sure we can put our hands together for all these international cultural engineers. We now move on to the award of honorary life membership to senior members, corporate members, companions and associates who have completed 40 years of membership continuously and who are above 60 years of age are awarded honorary life membership. They will be exempted from paying annual subscription fees from the next year onwards, but will continue to enjoy all the facilities and benefits extended to other members of their class. The members receive the honorary life membership will be presented with a certificate. They are engineer Dr. Pratap Sivarapasapile. Engineer Dr. G.G.A. Godalia. <laughs> Engineer A.D. Vikram Singha. Engineer D.P. Malavarachi. Engineer Mrs. D.P. Lamavadisuria. Engineer C.W.K. Pereira. <laughs> Engineer D.N.J. Ferdinando. Engineer E.A.C. Ekanaika. Engineer DCAS Patmatelaka. And Engineer G. Hemal Artisava. We now move on to members receiving honorary life membership. And those members receiving honorary life membership. Engineer LDC Pereira. Engineer N.J. Barnasuria. Engineer Salia K. Kalwarachi. Engineer Ms. S.M.C.S. Samarkorn. Engineer T.D. Handagama. Engineer P.K. Vijayaratna. Engineer D.H. Jasuria. Engineer Dr. G.A.K. Padmaparama. Engineer T.H.B. I. Fernando.
ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಜಿ ಸಿ ಬಾದರಿಗೊಡಗೆ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಎ ಎಲ್ ಎಂ ನಿಜಾ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಎಂ ಎನ್ ಎ ಸಮರ್ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಮಿಸಿಸ್ ಟಿ ಡಿ ಅಭಯ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಎಂ ಎನ್ ಎ ಸಮ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಮಿಸಿಸ್ ಟಿ ಡಿ ಅಭಯ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಮಿಸಿಸ್ ಟಿ ಡಿ ಅಭಯ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಗುಣವಾರ್ಧನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರ್ ಎಸ್ 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 ವಿಪುಲಾನಂದನ್ I'm sure we can put our hands together and give all of them another round of applause. Thank you very much, Honorable Sir. Thank you. I now have the pleasure of inviting our guest of honor, Engineer M.R. Prelis. The session. They are Engineer Dr. G.A.K. Padma Peruma. The best paper by an associate.